We're so excited to leave Van Der's Bay, continue heading south, and have our first night passage in months. We are seriously the best at identifying fish. We're not. I'm gonna call it one-eyed dead fish. What just happened? I don't know. We got the preventer on the main and all of a sudden it just backed and threw us around. I'm Kate, and this is my husband Mick. Our kids, Thomas and Bentley. Five years ago, we had this crazy idea to travel the world with our kids, and never did we imagine our mode of transportation would be a sailboat. These are my parents. It's been their lifelong dream to sail across oceans. And so together, a dream was born. Come along with us as we learn, laugh, <laughs> I, play with, I play with boats. And explore. And hey, don't forget to hit subscribe. Okay, so we are up. Today is the day that we're leaving La Cruz. We've been at this dock spot that's really close to shore. And a couple of nights ago, Mick felt like he heard some scurrying around the boat. And then we noticed a bit of droppings on the boat. We think it's just a mouse. We went shopping yesterday and we've got all these apples with little bites in them. But I mean, at least a good meat food. We should leave those apples out. No, Bentley, we're not going to feed the mouse. No, <laughs> on, on the dock. So you'll be like, that's a good idea. Lure him off the boat. Anyway, we did look for some mouse traps in town yesterday and we didn't find any. So I'm not really sure what our plan is because we're leaving. Little Mouse is coming for an overnighter. Here we go! Uh-oh. It's a beautiful day. Yep. What did you work so hard on last night? You hung up our lights. You look so nice. Well done. Mick, what did you work so hard on yesterday? You made our old shade cover work yes. on our new bimini yes. frame. Yes, very similar in uh, design from before. Got some extra supports here. Doesn't look super nice, but it's important to have some shade. Our plan, and we rarely share our long-term plan, it's always changing, but the plan is to head south from La Cruz, Banderas Bay. We have about a month, so we don't know how far south we will get. We're just gonna take our time. If we land somewhere that we love, we'll stay there longer. And we will be back in Banderas Bay in a month to pick up our Bimini cover and a special guest that's coming aboard for two weeks. Hattie! Auntie Hattie! So we're all looking forward to that. And we are really looking forward to heading south, getting some more swimming, snorkeling, yeah, Bodyboarding. Here, here the water's really gloomy. It's kind of cold. Like the wind. Yeah, the water's just not super appetizing in the bay, which surprised me. What do we have off our starboard side there, T? Whales. Whales? Yeah. About that. Oh, there's a whole bunch. There's two. Oh, yeah, there's a Just beautiful. Pretty awesome. Good to be back out here. Yeah, it really is. Well, were we in La Cruz for three weeks? Just about. It's crazy. <laughs> the wind behind us just slightly, so it's just a dead zone. There's like five knots of wind behind us, which is what we're going. And, yeah, <laughs> the flags, nothing's moving. So it's a bit of a bummer that we lost all the footage of our night passages coming down the Baja, because we had lots of them and we got pretty good at them. We just fell into a really good routine. We're getting right into it with our shifts. We do throw out three hour shifts. Um, so we do that obviously during the day and the night. Today is just a one nighter to get to Chamela. We're gonna see what the conditions are like. We might keep going further. We're not really sure. We're just gonna see how it goes. What's one of our favorite things to do on passage? Woohoo! Keep going! He's big! Benito? Another Benito? You think? 
What do you think of that it's one? It's your call. We do have Benito in the freezer still. What do you think, Tommy? You want to keep it? Your first reel in? It's pretty big. Yeah. All right, let's keep it. Uh, can toss me the bucket? Wasn't my finest gaff. We are seriously the best at identifying fish. We're not. So there's a Pacific Bonito, which we were catching a ton of coming down the Baja. And then there's a fish that looks like a Pacific Bonito, but it's an, it's more of a tuna, right Mick? The Pacific Bonito we were catching had like white meat, didn't it? See. And this meat's very red, so we're wondering if it's not a Bonito? I don't know. We're terrible at knowing what type of fish we've caught, but we enjoy eating them and Mick's really good at filleting them. This one's definitely feels different than anything else we've cut up. There's uh, bones in places where there isn't usually bones. We caught a new fish. And it's got a really big eye. I'm gonna call it one-eyed dead fish. Whoa, it's so red. Mm -hmm. Well, we're finally getting the jib up. We're rounding Cape Corriente. When we read about the Cape, it was like, once you round this Cape, you are in tropical paradise. So we're looking forward to that. Is it always that much work? Pulling the thing, it's going up. I was like, I'm saying you're a little out of shape. Oh, I was pulling. I had to use the brandy round. Yeah, it's fine. not sure what to make of this fish that we caught. The meat was like dark red. And I cooked it and it went brown. It kind of looks like a steak. I don't know. Maybe I butchered it. Maybe it's a tuna and I just ruined it. I don't know. We did reel in a different fish. We did reel in a different fish for sure. Looked so much like a bonito. Line was in the water and then it went and then um, and he put the fish in. It's a great story, isn't it, Thomas? Yeah, you caught this. Well done, sir. Mm -hmm. I think if anyone has any really great fish recipes, you should pop them in the comments below. Because we eat a lot of fish, and I only have so many recipes. I think I kind of did that one weird. I'm pretty sure it was a tuna. And I kind of cooked it like it wasn't. I don't know if that's a no-no or not. I don't know much about cooking fish, I'm realizing. It's not something I have a lot of experience with. It is a beautiful night. The engine is off. We are sailing. Wind is filling in. We're doing around four knots, which is nice. pretty good. And yeah, we're around the Cape. What is the place near Chamela called, Tommy? It starts with a P. Perula. Perula, and that is in the Bay of Chamela, and there is a town called Chamela as well, but our first stop, if we stop, is the town is Perula. I don't know, I can't keep all the names straight, people. It's too hard. I think we can set the pole up. I'll undo the halyard topping lift, it's called now, because it's attached to the pole, and switch it around and set all the control lines up. We got our whisker pole from Minis in Newport Beach and it was a total game changer. Up until then, we really couldn't sail downwind well at all because the jib just backfills and flaps around a lot. The whisker pole allows you to have your main sail out one side of the boat and the jib out the other and it's called wing on wing. So that whisker pole kind of acts like a boom for the front sail, for the foresail. So it's pretty cool. Our whisker pole is maybe a little bit undersized. Mick would really like to get a bigger and longer one. It works really good. I missed it. My camera died. Is it good? 
Yeah, I think so. We'll try that for the moment. Whisker pull is up. See, it just acts like a little boom off the port side of our boat. Now we raise the jib again, and the jib sheet is through the end of the whisker pull, and it just holds it out there so lovely. Tighten the main in a bit and then we'll just adjust and play it's crazy a bit. See how half a knot it takes away two hours of your trip. Twelve is that? Oh really? Nine. Seven. Wow. Look at seven. Now that we have our sail plan and everything, I'm just trying to avoid chafe, so just adjusting things, tightening things up so nothing's bashing and rubbing. It's night time, seven o'clock. This is perfect. At this speed, oh, we're going 5.2. Yeah. At this speed, we'll get there at six. It's good that we can make up some time. But that, that's awesome, because I love waking up and hearing the anchor go down. That's like my favorite thing. That's good. Feels a little more humid now. Sticky, oh, mm. really sticky. Good night. Good night. I'm going to rest. Night. Bentley's Dad. coming with me. Bentley? Yeah. All right. Good night. Good night. Good night. What was that? What just happened? I don't know. We got the preventer on the ma main and all of a sudden it just backed and threw us around. You okay? Yeah, I don't know if the wind just like instantly shifted, but oh. the main keeps back filling. The autopilot hasn't been as sensitive as it normally has. It's been going like this a lot. Are you able to see if we've got the wind behind us right now? I just can't see the thing. Yeah, we do now. Everything looks fine. I think the wind just caught the back of the main and a wave just kicked us around and it just pushed it back the other way. I don't think anything's broken. Yeah, nothing broke. Let's put a reef in this main. I think that's a good idea. Okay. Anyway, I'm not gonna try and film this because it's too hard in the dark and all the things, so. All is well. That felt crazy though. That took us an hour to resolve. <laughs> this is so crazy. Just to put a reef in the main took an hour. <sighs> we had to pull the boom in to reef it again. And then we were like, is there something wrong with our autopilot? Because why are we, we were going from 110 degrees to 170 degrees. So the boat was moving 60 degrees back and forth, which that uh, that doesn't happen with our autopilot. Like, of course, there's a little bit of movement as the waves push you around and stuff, but not 70 degrees worth. Is it better now, Mick? Yeah, the wind is definitely shifting around a lot. And I think that's that part of the problem. It keeps trying to skip behind the main. So the wind is swirling around too. So I don't know what our solution for the night will be, but the reef in the main definitely helped. The autopilot just balanced the boat better. What is your plan for the rest of the night? Sleep. Plan the now night. is to just sit. We need to turn to starboard a little bit just to get away from land. So I'm gonna keep trying to adjust to the right. And if we don't, and the wind's too much on that side, we'll have to bring the main around onto the port side. But we can leave the pole set up still if we want. Well, should we just do that now? Turn to starboard and be on our reach? Uh, then we just head out to sea quite a bit, which we could. But I still want to see if we can make it work the way it is now. Okay, are you okay? Yep. The engine's on, what's going on? I tried to let Kate sleep and we were doing about 0.8 to a knot and a half, which is fine if the seas come, but it's not. And uh, it wasn't much fun and the sails were smacking around, so I thought we'd start her up, make some ground, and then hope the wind comes on again later. Such a strange night. It sure makes a difference when the wind swirls around and the sea state's a bit awkward, doesn't it? Oh. It's just no rest. Yeah. Constantly fixing adjusting. Okay, well you need to go sleep for like four or five hours. So much for our three hour shifts, it all got messed up tonight. Yeah, I'll pull that jib down and tie it up, then just get us on a good course, I guess, and making sure you're happy, and, I'm then, fine. and then we'll I, go from there. I got like 
40 minutes of sleep, so yay. It's weird, normally I'm a great, I sleep fine. Like I just lay down and go to sleep for three hours, but it's not happening today. If you're tired though, I feel okay. So it's No, up man, you need to go lay down. Don't say stuff like that. Okay. Back in internet, but this book yeah. tells us what it was. But look at the pictures. Show the picture. Like it, it's it really exactly hard to tell. It, it is exactly. No, it. but I'm just saying. Like the pictures are a bit tricky. Because I saw those spots. But that's great. Anyway, the I find that book very hard to be sure. Because that one also doesn't tell us like the color of the meat or anything. Like that would be really helpful. I don't think it tells you what color the meat is because this is just a this is, look at the pretty oh, no. fish don't we need, like, kill them and eat we them. need like a fishing book i looked it up on the internet it's a skipjack that's why similar I similar striped bonito lack these spots and that's why it looks so much like okay one. so the other fal false albacore also have spots and they're not good eating there you go we're pretty sure we ate a tuna and i definitely butchered it in the oven honestly i don't know much about fish want. i feel like i'm a why pretty... is that any different than cooking chicken or meat you can do a thousand things with I that know. i don't know i feel like i'm not i'm a pretty good cook but i never have had experience cooking fish and i don't really know the rules people dig holes in the sand and put fish in there and then come back and eat it later but it's a certain type of fish right i don't know <sighs> i mentioned earlier that we were passing Chamela, which was originally where we were thinking to go. So we continued on and we are heading to Bahia Tenacatita. Woo! A very popular destination. It's supposed to be absolutely beautiful. Pretty beautiful here, isn't it? It looks great. Front row seats, mate. Yeah, it's perfect. Love it. Good job. If you're interested in supporting the production of these videos, please head on over to our website. There are two great ways to show your support. Check out our Meraki merch in the shop or hit that support button and help keep us afloat. Yeah.